ready, sir. All right, well, good evening. It's 7.15 and we're going to get started with our meeting. I want to thank the City of Denton and the NLK Center for hosting us tonight. This is the third of four public hearings that this committee is having across the county. Um, we're very excited to have you all here tonight. We, we look forward to hearing your comments. Um, I want to explain something about our process that we had over a year ago and this is what we're doing tonight is part of the continuation of the process which the commissioner's court made a commitment to the public that we would follow and that's exactly what we're doing tonight so well over a year ago the Dixie county commissioner's court appointed a committee of citizens to evaluate what is the best purpose and what should we do with the memorial which is on the courthouse lawn and we appointed 10 members of that committee. We ultimately appointed 15 members. We have two people who were previously on that committee who are actually serving on this committee today uh, that we're meeting tonight. I would like to introduce the chairman of that previous committee, Mr. John Baines, and he's gonna talk a little bit about the committee process which the original committee went through, and then we're gonna talk about tonight and what we're doing tonight, okay? So Mr. Baines, thank you, sir. Thank you, Judge. Very much. Yes, sir, thank you. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, what I wanted to do was to, for those of you who weren't aware of the process, give you an update on what happened um, in uh, getting us to this point. On November the 1st, 2017, okay, it's almost two, two, years. two years ago, uh, Judge Eve called me and said, John, I'd like to have a meeting with you. After the tragedy in Charlottesville, Virginia, well, people unfortunately lost their lives around uh, the, the Confederate statue. There was the concern whether or not that level of violence would come here to Denton, Texas. So the commissioner's court uh, made a decision to appoint 10 members to a committee to look at what we should do with the uh, Confederate statue of the memorial. So when the judge came over and asked me to join, I told him I'd be, I'd be happy and I hope I can, I can participate and bring some, something <coughs> neat, meaningful to the community. I was one of 10 members. One of the committee members, Mr. Cuthbert, don't mind me using your name, pointed out that we only had one female and nine males on that committee. Mr. Cuthbert said, we're out of whack here. So let's add five more females. We went back to the commissioners and they added five more. So we ended up with 15 total. And a recorder, uh, where is um, uh, um, Peggy Riddle? Peggy. <laughs> who handle all the correspondence and things for us. And during one of the first meetings, uh, somehow I got appointed to be the chairman. Just to tell you a little story, when they were asking for a chairman, my head was down on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want it. You got enough things to do. But I realized, you know, God is good and we just need to step up when the time is needed to step up. So I took the position and for four months, November, December, January, and February, we had a lot of deliberations. We ran around the county. We were in um, uh, the um, Crossroads area. We were at MLK. We were at um, the courthouse on the square. We were also on the, um, uh, what's the Southwest, Southwest Courthouse. Yeah, Southwest the Court. Southwest Courthouse. And we had meetings. And in those meetings, we recorded about a 50-50 split. 50 people, 50% 50 said keep it, 50% said move it. So we listened to historians, we read, we did as many things as we could to try to come to an objective decision. Because believe me, when you come to that table, you already have something in your heart. But my, my desire was, John, be objective. Let's see what's presented and then make a decision. So eventually we got down to the final day when we had to take a vote. And I'm going to read you everything. If somebody would like to have a copy of this, we have copies here. This is my report that I gave to the commissioner's court after that meeting. So please indulge me for just a moment. Dear committee members, thank you for your service to the com community of Denton County. In our final meeting 
on last Thursday, February 1st, 2018, there was a 10 to 5 vote after every committee member made his or her recommendation. Ten committee members voted to keep the Confederate statue in its current location and add content to educate those who visit the statue. Five committee members voted to replace the Confederate statue with a more inclusive version of the veterans of fallen wars who gave their lives from Denton and from other contextual information. With a very strongly worded request from the commissioner's court, which basically said, in no way would they reasonably consider any recommendation which was not either a consensus or a supermajority. In order to move some of the five towards a more consensus with the 10, the 14 members viewed a very roughly drawn sketch, which is here, this is the sketch. I provided three versions of the sketch, and underneath here, it says, very strongly worded language. No more. And that's what we're having this meeting here for. We need some language that's going to go underneath this statue. We provided three versions. One, two, three. Some additional context would include an honor to all veterans by name who gave their lives from Denton County and all the wars. Let's tell the real story of race relations in Denton from the time of slavery until now. We need the real story to use this opportunity to tell the world of the good things that are going on in Denton County. Denton County is more than a slave statue. There's a lot of good things going on here. So one of the things we ask for is tell us what to put there. Tell folks about the good things that are going on in Denton. We agree that the current 15 committee would not be responsible for creating the strongly worded language decrying slavery and related matters. Nor would the current 15 member committee be responsible for creating the context or the interactive videos for two kiosks. Two kiosks with interactive videos. Those responsibilities would be given to another committee. I'm almost done. Thank you, thank you for your patience. Several of our current committee members are interested in serving on the committees that prepare the wording and videos for the kiosks. Based on the foregoing understanding to the commissioner's court, I'm providing you with three example, examples of visual concepts. But it's simply a, content, a, a concept design. That's all we can do. Our recommendation will simply provide the commissioners with an idea of what the final version will be. We'll be re recommending a concept. I sincerely request your support of the concept. We cannot find an internet example of kiosks which match same period architecture, but we should be able to find one design Okay. and match that to the period of architecture. Once we presented these three examples, we went from a 10 to 5 to a 15 to 0. So that's how we got here today. Now unfortunately, getting to this point has been a little slow. A lot of things going on, new election, new administration, etc. But we're here. And tonight we'd like to hear from you how we can decry that system of slavery. We need some wording. And we also need information for the kiosks so that future generations, when we're gone, I'm 67 years old. I'm not going to be here that long. And so we'd like to hear from you tonight. I'm a little emotional, so please forgive me if I'm offended you. I normally don't get that excited. <laughs> but we would love to hear from you tonight about how we can decry slavery and how we can tell the story. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Baines. I think he did a, a good job of outlining the previous work of the previous committee. And the commissioner's court has appointed this seven-member body. We have a gentleman who's uh, 
could not be with us tonight who could not be with us tonight but we are this is a process um, basically this is a purchasing process this committee is working as an evaluation committee that we will be doing a national search for artists to submit their qualifications to this committee we will be reviewing those qualifications making a final determination of a short list of potentially three to five artists who will then come back with some submittals of ideas and context for the confederate memorial on the courthouse lawn and so what we had asked for tonight is a couple of things number one we want to hear from you we have a variety of people i already have a dozen people on the sign up sheet if you did not sign in be sure to submit a form if you would like or sign in so we can be sure to call upon you um, i know that people um, would like to have the memorial removed uh, the commissioner's court has taken the recommendation of that previous committee which was 15 to keep the memorial and add context <coughs> so that's exactly what this committee is charged in doing is adding the context adding the art piece near or around the existing memorial so we would love to have any ideas that you may have to serve as inspiration to this committee things that we should consider and narratives that we sh that we sh could should consider just as Mr. Baines was talking about the kiosks, uh, we would love to know of different themes or storylines that you would like to have us include so we can go ahead and get those videos prepared so that when we uh, construct this new art piece, this new language, we can include those stories and narratives on the kiosks as well. So at this time, with no further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and call on our first person, and uh, Reed Faring. Is that right? Mr. Faring? Hello. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to give everybody three minutes on the um, on the timer as we do in commissioner's court. So go right ahead. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, to be honest, right up front, I was completely caught off guard by this 15 to zero vote, <laughs> and uh, my plan was to come here and try to talk to you all about removing the Confederate statue, but that isn't going to happen. So. Um, my, my feelings about this have been extremely troubled. I'm one of those Americans who had grandfathers on both sides of the Civil War. Um, I was in school during the years when we fought for the Civil Rights Movement, for women's liberation, fought against the war in Vietnam. I'm one of those people. Um, but I went to school with the first African-American students that ever attended my university. I took the first class ever offered at my university by an African-American professor, and we, my generation, were deeply involved in, in the Civil Rights Movement, and naively, we thought we'd fixed everything. In the last 10 years, I have to say, I've become really discouraged about the resurgence of anger, of prejudice, and even violence in this country, and I'm really afraid um, of that situation and that, that we have an obligation, a responsibility to try to heal those wounds and bring all the parts of our community together. So I don't have a specific recommendation for this plan, for these strong words and for these video presentations, um, but um, I'll offer any help that I can and hope that this turns out to be a process that engages everyone. It's really important that, uh, that all members of our community get together and, and, and not, I mean, it's a, it's a really complex issue to say the least. We can't make the history of enslavement go away. We can't make Jim Crow go away. We can't make voter suppression and forced relocations to new neighborhoods. We can't make those things go away. We have to find a way to, to turn that history into a positive force that, that puts members of this community together. So um, 
I'm not going to ask you to take the statute down. I had a great argument for that, <laughs> but it's out of date. <laughs> um, but I do offer any help that I can in, in, the, in the challenge that you have and the exciting opportunity that this is, this is, you know, all these catastrophes have opportunities embedded in them. And the fact that you all are having these meetings and that we're talking about this publicly is something that wasn't happening five years ago. So uh, let's pray that, that this whole process works for the benefit of everyone in Denton. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And Mr. Reed, I, thank you for being here. And I would like to encourage you that if you want to stay involved in the process, and this goes out for anyone here, if, you don't, if you're not willing to speak tonight or if you go home and think of another idea that you would like to submit to us, you can email us at artcommittee at dittoncounty.com. And so if you have any in input and additional, it's in, it's in the back. and it's in the back as well in the public comment forms, but it's artcommittee at dittoncounty.com. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Mr. Willie Hutspeth. Good, good evening, sir. For 21 years, I've been trying to get the commissioner's court to do something uh, with that uh, statute. I want to clarify some things that Mr. Baines shared with you. I was on that committee, and what I realized very quickly that the 10 people that they, the people that they had on the committee were completely convinced, or not convinced, they wanted the statue to stay. There was no moving of those people. They never moved off that, no matter what was presented and what we said. Then we came to the final vote. I voted to, from the 10 to 5, to go to 15, because Mr. Bain, Mr. Baines presented a very good argument. If we can't move it, then at least let's do something to, to add to it. I since changed my mind on that issue because it took so long for them to, the commissioner's court, to come up with something that we'd said we wanted to have done. And then they presented something that showed this big, nicely refurbished statue of the Confederacy and put some replica of an African-American person six feet tall behind it. And I thought, so that's what you you're going to do it. And the other thing that really troubled me is that it asked for any of our input. They put the people on this committee, the ones that was on the other committee, that was completely dedicated to keeping the thing there. Now, what are they going to do on this committee but, but sugarcoat it and try to make it so that this, this statue can stay there? Now, one of the things that I'm troubled with is why in the world are you working so hard to keep that thing there? We've compromised with saying, Move it to the historical park. Move it to the cemeteries where the people are who died. Move it inside the courthouse where the, where the, uh, the uh, historical facts, some historical artifacts are there. You don't want to move that thing anywhere. So you ask me, what's wrong with it where it is? It's in a position of honor. It stands high, it, very tall in the center of, of the city of Denton, and it reads on there, our Confederate soldier. Let me ask you. Who is the hour that that statue is, is referring to? Who is that that, it's, that's, that becomes our Confederate soldier? I know who it is. Just like the fountains were only for white people to drink from. Period. There was no color in the black. It was white and white. You put that there and then you have it in the downtown center, center of this city and you're saying that this is what we should honor. I'm not honoring it. I've changed my mind. I know that I can speak to what I'm talking to you about, and I'm speaking. I'm saying the best place, best thing to do with that statue to give context to it is move it. And then it'll be somewhere where if you are concerned about the history, you can go there and actually see that. All right, next is a Rebecca Dickstein. Dick Stein. Dick Stein, I'm sorry. Okay. Lots of people missed All right, <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you for having this hearing. So I moved to Denton in 2000, 
hold it. Okay, so actually I'll use my lecturing voice. I moved to Denton in 2000 and uh, I was recruited here to be on the faculty at UNT and when I came nobody took me to the square so it wasn't until after I moved here that I went down to the square and saw the statue and I was just appalled at the place of honor in the middle of the county in the middle of the county seat that the statue holds um, to me, this is honoring not only slavery, but Jim Crow um, and segregation and, and all sorts of terrible things. And I, I still see it and shudder. And um, so I, I like uh, Mr. Hudspeth, think that the, the committee, in all due respect, made the wrong decision. And I think that the the statue needs to be moved someplace where it is not in a place of honor. I think it's really hard to, um, I don't know, pretty it up in some way because it will still be there and it will still speak to honoring something that I think is dishonorable. Next is Marguerite Neal. Hi, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, I was going to say I've, I've been through, uh, I started at the square the day after Charlottesville. I was drawn to the square. And I have walked past that statue without thinking about it, um, I guess embracing my white privilege and not understanding exactly what it was I was walking under. So what I'm gonna do is, I also wanna point out that that committee, it kind of reminded me, the selection of the committee was like gerrymandering, <laughs> you know, and we got the expected result. Um, and I also remember how elated Mary Horn was when that decision was made. She was gleeful and she got her hands together. You should go back and watch the video. And I think the people in the audience were just, it was a gut punch is what it was. And even just hearing all of this again, how many people have stood before the commissioners and have argued so eloquently that it was just ignored. So um, I heard a speech that was, it was remarkable by Mitch Landrew, the former mayor of New Orleans, and he made this in the May of 2017. And I just want to read as much as I can, uh, just a, a section of it. But what I highly, highly, highly suggest that all of you do is go home and listen to it online if you've not heard it before. All right. And he was talking about these things after they very nobly <laughs> and bravely removed four statues in New Orleans, in New Orleans, right? So um, here I go. The, mon the monument was meant to rebrand the history of our city and the ideals of a defeated Confederacy. It is self-evident that these men did not fight for the United States of America. They fought against it. They may have been warriors, but in this cause, they were not patriots. These statues are not just stone and metal. They are not just innocent remembrances of a benign history. These monuments purposely celebrate a fictionalized, sanitized confederacy, ignoring the death, ignoring the enslavement, and the terror that it actually stood for. After the Civil War, these statues were a part of the terrorism as much as burning a cross on someone's lawn. They were erected purpose, purposefully to send a strong message to all who walked in their shadows about who was still in charge of the city. Should you have further doubt about the true goals of the Confederacy, in the very weeks before the war broke out, the Vice President of the Confederacy, Alexander Stevens, made it clear that the Confederate cause was about maintaining slavery and white supremacy. He said in his now famous cornerstone speech that the Confederacy's cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination to the superior race is his natural and normal condition. This, our new government, is the first in the history of the world based upon this great physical, philosophical, and moral truth. 
Now with these shocking words still ringing in your ears, I want to try to gently peel with your hands the grip on a false narrative of our history that I think weakens us and makes a wrong turn we made many years ago so we can more closely connect with integrity to the founding principles of our nation and forge a clearer and straighter path toward a better city and a more perfect union. I am not judging anybody. I am not judging people. We all take our own journey on race. A friend asked me to consider these moments from the perspective of an African-American mother or father trying to explain to their fifth grade daughter who the soldier is and why he stands in the heart of our town. Can you do that? Can you look in that young girl's eyes and convince her that the soldier is there to encourage her? Do you think she will feel inspired and hopeful by that story? Do these monuments help her see a future with limitless potential? Have you thought that if her potential is limited, yours and mine are too? We all know the answers to these very simple questions. When you look into the child's eyes, it is the moment when the searing truth comes into focus. This is the moment when we know what is right and what we must do. We can't walk away from the truth. And it goes on, and I'm not gonna um, finish it, but I do suggest that y'all listen to it because I, as I read it over um, again this evening, I just, come on, we can be better. Thank you. All right, next, Ms. Lenny McAdams. Good evening and thank you for this opportunity. Yes, <clears throat> I want to say that though you're asking us for help with the wording, I go back to the, to the statue itself and feel that it should be moved. It is not in a good place. There is no room for any statue of black people and many, many black people were killed, were lynched during this time period. There is no recognition of any of them and however many words you f put together to put on them, it won't overtake the picture that you're looking at. It's there in your face. And there's no Martin Luther King. There's no Emmett Till. There's, there's no picture of what these people did to other people like me. The war was over and it wasn't until 1918 that this statue was put in its place. Shortly thereafter, an entire neighborhood of black people were removed from what is now Civic Center, what is now Quaker Town Park. All of that was in some way tied together. It was to get us out of sight, out of their vision, and to express what they felt about black people. That, ne that community still suffers from what happened to them when they were forcibly moved. W there is simply isn't room on the square to have a proper acknowledgement of what happened to the blacks while you have that statue there that honors the idea of the Confederacy. It, it, that's what it is, it's an honor when it's high, it's taller than anything else you'll put there. It forever leaves us in our place. Nobody should think that those were um, meant to be just reminders of the war and partially because of the length of time after the war ended and it was only when the 13th, 14th, and 15th, amend 15th Amendment were passed that gave blacks rights that they had not had before or it was deemed that they didn't have them before. That it came back, this was their way. It wasn't another war, not a physical war, but it was a war of words and a war of pictures to, to rid the community of the blacks, move them, and don't think about them anymore. And I don't think you can put enough words on that statue and still the statue will be the focus it'll be the main thing and you can't put enough there to make it all right to leave it there and i again if you attempt to put up uh, another statue 
are statues of blacks who were lynched during that period of time, you finally run out of space. Thank you. Thank you. I've heard several things. If you want a statue or something that's just as tall as the Confederate statue, make that recommendation. If words are not enough, make that recommendation. We're here to listen to recommendations. We realize that we're not going to undo all the wrongs of the past. The judge came up with a general concept. It's been said that whatever that was was too small. We'll make it just equal size. Make that recommendation. And we're here to listen to, to you so that we can do our best with, with the situation we have. So please make the recommendations. Thank you. We're Thank making you. the recommendation. The recommendation is to move it. <coughs> okay. That's, the That's not going to happen. All right. Next is Mr. D.J. Taylor. Good evening, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for the, the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I come here to give my two cents worth to uh, speak to what I think is right and what I think is wrong. The um, Infinity Monument and Market purports to clarify the role of African Americans in Denton County as well as put it in perspective. It's a huge task before you, and I uh, commend you for taking on the challenge. First, the uh, thing I'd like to address is the published proposal that I have seen that shows a marker. There's a large stone visible through the archway of the Confederate Monument. In my opinion, in my opinion the placement is wrong. It's, uh, I believe it to be demeaning when you consider that the monument is several feet behind the soldier. It's lower and it's in the shadow of the soldier itself. I do hope this committee will consider a different location for it. As for the content of the marker, there's not enough room to address all the issues that culminated in the purchase and placement of the Confederate statue, nor to provide insight into uh, what has been termed the uh, black experience in Denton County. Such a comprehensive work would require many markers. Simply put, you cannot tell the complete story in 500 words or less. The bitterness uh, from the harsh days of post-Civil War reconstruction produced a responsive backlash caused the lost cause and created an atmosphere where the mindset of Denton County in 1918 has, turned, has been deemed to be on the wrong side of history. And from there, we have come to discuss what we're discussing tonight. <clears throat> there, was a, there was a time when there was considerable mistreatment of the black community, a time where the Klan was strong and an atmosphere of fear prevailed. And my concern is the final product of the wording on the proposed edition might only tell the sanitized version of that history. We need to address it head on and tell the truth from, from all perspectives. Because when we, one, fail to uh, be honest with ourselves, and two, offer only a partial viewpoint, the result yields nothing worthy about our history itself. The edifice on our courthouse lawn is but a reminder of bitter times. It's a relic that offers no omission of the wrongness regarding the Confederate side of the American Civil War. It's a remnant of time lacking in healing and compassion. As it now stands, it is a sad commentary on the one-time mindset of the county, a county that I still love after 70 plus years. I believe we can do better. We must do better. We and you, the committee, must not fail nor fall short in the effort. It will not be an easy process. I suggest that something be at least the lines uh, be on the uh, marker, say, celebrating the Confederacy and its place in the history of the U.S. was, was and is wrong. We uh, denounce slavery in all its forms for all times. Benton County is an inclusive entity that values each and all of its citizens. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right, next is Jack Thompson. <coughs> Good evening, sir. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, say a few words. Um, um, 
I've only lived in Denton for 26 years, but um, I really do not appreciate the fact that this statue causes pain to the black community, and I think it expresses a viewpoint that we no longer share. Um, it, the, the statue is not un unique. Um, it needs to be restored. A finial is missing. The water fountains do not work. It shows sign of signs of weathering. And so I think the proper place is to move it to a historic park, which we have, and there kiosks can be added and uh, a more complete story can be told. So I am in favor of uh, moving the statue and uh, I hope that that will be taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Jessica Luther Brummel. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I would like for the following to be included in any contextualizations of the monument somewhere other than the square. In early August 1905, the Denton Record Chronicle reported that the United Daughters of the Confederacy UDC chapter, organized by and named after a young woman named by Katie Daffin, who, according to the Texas Historical Association, was the daughter of Lawrence Daffin, a proud Confederate veteran and first-generation Ku Klux Klan member. In 1910, the DRC publication um, reported that Katie Daffin, the daughter of the Klan member, directed the local Denton chapter to erect the Confederate monument. In dozens of DRC articles covering the UDC's eight-year fundraising campaign, this icon of power was referred to repeatedly as a monument to the Confederacy, a tribute to the Confederacy, or a tribute to the Confederate cause. It was not in honor of the common soldier, as has often been suggested due to its lack of Confederate leaders' names or any soldiers' names for that matter. The monument was mounted in place on the square for months before the UDC hosted their dedication ceremony on a Monday, June 3rd, 1918, the anniversary of Jefferson Davis, Davis's birthday. The headline of an in-depth two-page DRC report was published the following day under large bold letters, Commemoration of Confederate Deeds. It was reported as a day long to be remembered by lovers of the Old South and its people, a day of commemoration of past events and an inspiration for future events. Obviously, we know that it was um, Confederate deeds of the past intended to be commemorated. What we need to clarify is what those future events the monument was meant to inspire were. It has been well articulated in scholarly research how just a little more than a year after the monument was dedicated, the City Federation of White Women's Clubs partnered with the Denton All-White City uh, Chamber of Commerce to make use of the white women's newly secured right to vote in a special city election designed to forcibly remove the residents of an all-predominantly black neighborhood called Quakertown away from Denton's White Women's College. In the City Federation's self-published 1929 historical available in Denton's Emily Fowler Library, the leaders of this organization proudly boast of their leadership and contributions to the removal of Quakertown residents, particularly via their intensive door-to-door -door solicitation campaigns. A comparison of the women's names listed in that same City Federation historical and those listed in their own meeting minutes available in the TWU Women's Collection with the women's list names listed in the Katie Daffin UDC chapter self-published historical also available in the Denton Emily Fowler, Fowler Library shows that at least 17 of Denton City Federation delegates were also UDC members. Further, a 1914 City Federation bulletin calling for the removal of Quakertown was written by the husband of a UDC Monument Committee member. With more than half of the City Federation delegates also members of the UDC, the women unanimously voted to make a $25 contribution to the Confederate Monument, a modern equivalent of $425. This means the same women who funded and erected the Confederate Monument were the same women who self-admittedly and proudly initiated and led a campaign to forcibly remove Denton's black citizens out of their own thriving neighborhood. The two campaigns were co-dependent. 
Um, it should also be made clear that the Confederate monument was established on the courthouse square as a tribute to white supremacy and made clear that the removal of Quakertown was one of the future events inspired by the commemoration of Confederate deeds on June 3, 1918. A Confederate veteran who spoke at the monument dedication ceremony was quoted in the DRC as stating he was confident that children of coming generations would be proud to hear the story of the Confederacy as related by the monument. The preservation of the monument's prominent placement at our city center and at the heart of the county seat for the last uh, century speaks to its self-fulfilling prophecy. The words of these white supremacists still speak to us today through the monument's inscription. They hope their examples would reach a hand through all the years to meet and kindle generous purpose and mold acts as pure as theirs. If these women were alive today, they would be proud to see that the majority of Denton's non-student black residents still live outside of the inner city in southeast Denton in the same area of town segregated by railroad tracks and highways where Quaker Town residents were forcibly relocated to 100 years ago. All right, next is Steve Patrick. I spoke before the big committee uh, two different times. Um, I've known Mr. Baines for a long time. There's not a person in this, um, there's not anybody in this room I, I have more respect for than that man right there. Um, I understand th the decision was, has been made. So what you guys are looking for is something other than what all these people have talked about tonight. Um, you're looking for words. Um, if you want words, put wrong is wrong. And those who were wronged will always be remembered. Then where you're going to have a kiosk, don't talk about the black man, talk about the black family. Because it was, it was entire families that were wronged. It wasn't, it wasn't just about a man picking cotton. It wasn't just about simple things, you know. It was, it was about entire families getting dispersed and displaced and everything. So make it like that. And then on the other side of it, have a white man and a black man shaking hands and show, show everybody what this community is all about now. And hell, if you want to use me and Mr. Baines as <laughs> models, <laughs> he has never shied away from, from any kind of publicity and really neither have I so that's from what I understand that's what you guys are looking for. well I will uh, um, thank you for being here I will say it's not only language that we're looking for but if there's imagery that you would like to have included as well that's something we're wanting to entertain so imagery whether it's a bronze or something yeah. like that I want the entire family I want the family recognized not just not just you know <laughs> one single individual. Okay. All right, thank you for providing input. <laughs> Next is Miriam Bloom. Hi there, thank you. <clears throat> so I am a pediatrician and I view things through the eyes of the child and I have two kids at home and I'm concerned and I, I feel like the process has been a challenge. I'm gonna to explain to my 10 year old that 15 people and maybe just 10 really um, made this decision for our whole community. And um, that might not seem fair to the five year old and the 10 year old and it doesn't seem fair to me. I think that the statue should be moved. I think it is um, not representative of our community. <clears throat> I had read that um, one of the commissioners had stated that removing the statue would not remove racism in our community. Absolutely. And I think it's true. But I think if we don't have the community will to remove it, then that speaks volumes of where we're at. Um, when you have a memorial and your 10 year old drives by and looks at it or walks past it, they think it's a celebration. It's, a, it's something to be honored 
and revered. And that's wrong for the 10 year olds to walk by that statue and feel that way. And if you put stuff on the side of it, who's still at the very top of that statue? What does that 10 year old think about that? And you know, if you're at a museum and you're reading all different things that have happened in our history, some good, some bad, there's contextualization because you're in a museum and you know that there's some context to what you're, you're interpreting. When you're on the town square, that's supposed to be the welcoming center for everybody here, um, and this is there, the children can't contextualize any sort of histor historical relevance of this statue. They just see it as a celebration. And it's sad to me to feel like we're gonna continue to show those 10 year olds that this is something to be celebrated. And I, I, I just don't like the process. I don't like that 15 people get to decide that all of us have to walk by this every day. And that if you put things on the side of it to make it <clears throat> more inclusive and appropriate, this guy's still at the very top. Symbolically, that doesn't seem right. Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. Not a problem. Next is Pam Hancock. Okay, okay, you're gonna submit something in writing. Okay. All right. Did you want to say something now? Okay, go ahead. Okay, sure. I'm going to sit here because I have a loud voice and I, I'm not going to, but I just want number one for the record, I was not on the original committee, okay? Number one. Number two, I'm having a real problem with some of the comments here and I don't want anybody to be offended, but I don't see a whole room full of black people wanting that statue removed. I don't. And there's nothing you can't tell me about being black, because I've been black for 55 years and I hope to continue. My father's from Mississippi, Philadelphia, Mississippi, where my family originated from. So I know all about this. I know all about racism. I know all about lynching. I know all about it. So I don't understand why we have some non-black people here who come up here and just as livid, had Willie not been coming to the commissioner's court complaining, some of you people would never have gotten up there and complained about this Confederate monument. I'm sorry, that's the way I feel. The other thing is, if you are so strongly about what happened in history, I don't see any of you talking to the Board of Education about taking black history out of the history books. Maybe one. Maybe one. But I don't see a 15 year struggle on that. So I'm a little offended because I don't want to be accused with going along with the program because that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for what this committee is here for. They already had the committee if you wanted it removed. And I'm sorry if you don't feel like 15 people were enough to make that decision. We have a city council who are a certain number of me uh, members who make a de decisions for this whole city as well as county commissioners for the whole county. And if that's not enough, I don't know what to tell you. But p me personally, as far as black history, what happened in this country, what happens in this city, what happens anywhere, I teach that to my children at home. I don't depend on the schools to do it. I don't pay attention to that statue. That statue means nothing. What I want is my son to come home at night and not have to worry if the police have stopped him and if he's gonna get killed by the police or my daughters. That's what I'm concerned about every day, not that statue. Now we're here to get content, whether what you like, what you don't like or whatever. 
I'm on another committee at TWU. They've already accepted responsibility for TWU's part in Quaker Town. And they've already, we've already put the plan in motion. They have it, they're gonna do what they're gonna do to commemorate it. But nobody knows about that. We're just gonna keep beating a dead horse because if we do what you want, then it'll be something else. And it's always gonna be something else. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Always until we resolve. Yeah, but you know what? Guess what, Jennifer? You get to go home every day and you get to use your white privilege to do right. what you want to do. That's not the same for All right. us. All right, here we go. All right, all right. All right. We are talking about skin color prejudice. Thank you. And prejudice still exists, whether you remove that statue or not. That's right. And right, it didn't Jennifer. just research 10 years ago. Sure, no, sure we're didn't. good. But bring sure. the ACLU here to this right. committee. There's a lot of suggestions getting ready to be made. All right, today. thank you. So and if you got into this thing too late, that's no, it, I, no. I, get, I got here to do what I was asked to do. Okay. All right. Next. 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 To be on this committee. And Next. To come and hear what? Jennifer, please sit down. Next, we're going to hear from Joshua Hatton. I just want to clarify so white people don't get to have a voice against white supremacy. I'm not saying that. Jo Joshua Hatton has the floor. Joshua Hatton has the floor. Well, I agree with many of those who have spoken, who have said that the solution that's being proposed here is unacceptable. I, too, think that the statue should be removed from where it is. Mr. Baines has asked us to let the committee know how can we decry slavery. I think that we can decry slavery by removing this monument which honors people who fought to promote slavery. Amen. And I think one thing uh, I can think you'll, you can expect is resistance to this plan and continued agitation to remove the statue. Thank you. Next is Ms. Jennifer Lane. Also, Jennifer Lane has the floor. Jennifer Lane has the floor. Thank you. Hi, friends. And we are. We are friends. Yes. We are. And we're fighting over something that we, none of us wants. Now, what I came here tonight, before when I went to the meeting in Crossroads, what I suggested was that we have a new judge, we can have a new process, and we can start over. You all have that right. The judge has that right. The commissioners have that right. This committee has that right. You can decide how you want to do this. You can decide whether you like your charge, whether you want to change it. Your charges are up to you, and how you pass it on is up to you. If the committee wants a suggestion, really, if, there's, if the committee really does want a suggestion regarding art, I will make one. I have spent 45 my, years of my life as a professional artist, and what I would suggest is to spend a year with temporary art everywhere in Denton County, including on the square, with a question asked to the artists. Statue, stay or go. And let the artists respond with visual art, musical art, verbal art, everywhere. Do not limit yourself to the art that you feel that you have to jump at this stage of the game to hiring an artist to de design something that everyone will hate. Everyone will hate it. If you hire a person out of a small pool, this fast, this quickly, this narrow. Somebody recommends somebody who recommends somebody who then does drawings for you. No, open it up. Really hear what the community has to say, whether they say, and people are gonna say, in the visual art, they're gonna say, removing this statue is not gonna protect my son from the cops. Believe me, there'll be all of that will be there. But so also will be some pretty creative solutions. And then, if you can, if you can persuade the county to take another look at this, to return the decision making back to the commissioners, when the 15 member committee was formed, it was formed in a manner to move that outward and have a, have a recommendation come back to sort of make it easier. The recommendation was only that, it was a recommendation. It never had to be accepted by the commissioners, but it was. But now, we have a new commissioner's court. 
and we have a new committee, and you all can do it how you think it should be done. My recommendation is open it to the artists. Let as many artists respond to this thing as possible in as many venues, in as many ways as they can. And tell the court it has to wait until that response is full, fulminous, and done. Thank you. Next is, is James Lane. Carr. Carr. Okay, I'm trying to read that. Mr. Carr. Uh, well, uh, along those very same lines, I have some suggestions. Uh, perhaps you could hire an artist with a pickup truck and a heavy chain <laughs> to tear it down. Or maybe, and I've suggested this before, so I apologize, it's kind of redundant, but I think hiring somebody to make a video of the demolition would be a nice work of art. Also, I, I mean, I realize this seems somewhat flippant, but without actually moving it, here's something else you could do. You could dig a 30-foot hole and lower it into the hole on the same location and bury it. Um, I'm saying these rather uh, flippant things because I find this statue to be an abomination, like others who weren't born here and I didn't see it from the time I was little. When I moved here and I saw it, I was really shocked. I still am shocked when I see it. Um, I guess what I really see when I look at it is a, a Ku Klux Klan shrine. That's what I see. Amen. And you, in my humble opinion, that's exactly what it is. Is there anyone? Is there? Perfect. Is there anyone else that is registered to speak? Peggy or Roz? Is there anyone that else is registered to speak? Could I register? Yes, you may. <laughs> Should I go back there? No, go ahead and go up there. Go ahead and state your name for the record. Um, hi, my name's Annette Becker, um, and. Uh, I also wish that this were not part of our community. I understand the ramifications of it historically are still very present today, but having something that's existed here for over a hundred years suggests that our community still feels the exact same way and is treating people the same way. Um, it's my understanding that the, this um, statue has not received historic landmark um, status, and it makes me wonder if that then being part of our living landscape is something that can be changed. Um, you know, maybe something covering up part of this, perhaps listing all of the names of the people who lived in Quakertown who were displaced contemporaneously with this being put up. You know, taking some of that space back for the people who have been oppressed by this, especially <coughs> historically. Um, my biggest concern with what's been suggested is that that isn't going to last a hundred years and that statue could still be there. You know, a kiosk is something that has to be maintained and I, Personally, as a historian, can't imagine that that's going to be done thoroughly, responsibly, sustainably into the future. Um, it sounds radical, but what if we even carved the names of the people who lived in Quakertown, you know, in that statue? If it's something that we're living with every day, it's something that we need to respond to. You know, maybe that sounds too radical, but I think this is a moment to maybe be radical. Um, yeah, I, ho I hope that artists are engaged. I feel like Kara Walker could be a good person to look to. Um, it seems like there are a lot of people really engaged with, so with social justice and thinking through its ramifications today. Um, so I hope that as we're looking you know, to, to examples um, for our future, um, I'm planning on sending an email with some suggestions, um, as an art historian especially, um, thinking through how people are addressing these things today, not just adding more text that people won't read, right. not offering generalized ideas of racism, but how it has affected our community specifically, I think could be really helpful if it has to stay. Um, and you know, who knows in 50 years what other decisions might be made. Right. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. That's right, good, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, anyone else that has not spoken? All right, thank you so much for being here tonight. Okay, you got a little carried away. I'm sorry. Judge, judge, judge. Does the lady have a question?